here. Make sure to subscribe, like, and share my videos. Be sure to leave a comment or question for me in the comment section below. Enjoy this video and remember to always, always, always do what you love. Hello, Kenilworth Elementary. This is Chef Tala. I'm Lena Escalante's aunt. Thank you for inviting me to career day. I'm very excited because this year I get to show you how to cook one of my favorite recipes. So first I'm going to tell you a little bit about me. Um, from the time I was little, I always enjoyed cooking at home. And by the time I was in high school, I decided if I liked cooking so much, I might as well make a career out of it because I don't want to work somewhere where I'm not happy. So I wanted to do something that made me happy. And if I'm going to be working for the rest of my life, I wanted it to be in a career that I enjoyed. And I enjoyed cooking, so that's why I went to um, culinary school. So after high school, I went to Johnson & Wales University in Rhode Island, and I majored in culinary arts. And I was there for two years, and I graduated with my associate's degree in culinary arts. And after I left there, I got a job with the Grand Hyatt Washington Hotel in Washington, D.C. And I was a banquet cook, cafeteria cook, off-premise caterer, and restaurant cook. And I worked there for a year. And my dream has always been to one day open my own restaurant, open my own business of some sort related to food. So I knew if I needed to be successful, I needed to learn how to run a business. So I went back to school for two more years at the University of Delaware and got my uh, bachelor's degree in hotel, restaurant, and institutional management. And after I graduated, I got a management job with Restaurant Associates. It was a three month summer internship. I learned how to run the front and back of the house of a, one of the Smithsonian museums. And then after that, I was offered a full-time job with them at the National Gallery of Art as a cash room manager. And then I was promoted to um, cafe manager. And then I left there and went to Panera Bread and helped them open three stores. And I was the assistant manager at Panera Bread for three years. Then I went back to the National Gallery of Art Restaurant Associates and continued doing cafe management. And then after that, that's when my career, um, chef career started. In 2016, the African American Museum opened in DC and I was asked to be the first uh, sous chef there. And of course I said yes. So that's how my chef career started. I was the first sous chef at the African American Museum. And basically what a sous chef is, it's the um, chef that's below the executive chef. The executive chef is the top chef who runs the whole place. But the sous chef basically supports the executive chef and is the right hand person of the executive chef. Does all the food ordering, make sure the kitchens run properly, make sure um, the cooks are making the recipes properly, make sure the rest of the food comes out on time, make sure the food tastes right, make sure the lines, the food lines are set up in time for service. Make sure the line servers are giving proper customer service. I also do. I also did inventory. Um, anything that had to do with the kitchen, I basically did. I also helped make menus when I was asked to help make menus. I helped with food costing. So basically, the sous chef does anything that has to do with running the kitchen and running the food line and making sure everything day to day is smooth in the kitchen. So after I. Um, I stayed at the African Museum for about a year and a half, and then I went to go work at an upscale retirement community called Ginger Cove in Annapolis, Maryland. And I was a senior sous chef there. It was me and an executive chef. And basically we had um, four kitchens. We had two upstairs, one was healthcare, and one was assisted living, and then we had two downstairs. One was um, a fine dining um, restaurant that only served dinner. And then the other one was a more casual dining restaurant that served lunch and dinner. So I was in charge of running all four kitchens, making sure the staff came on time. Again, food ordering, inventory, cleaning, you name it, I was doing it. And we were, the two kitchens upstairs were open for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So I was working a lot. When executive chef wasn't there, I was there from breakfast all the way to dinner. When the executive chef was on vacation, I was there all the way from breakfast to dinner. So it's a lot of work, but I learned a lot working there. It was a great experience. 
But now, today, I'm working at the Smithsonian American Indian Museum. And I really enjoy working there. I'm a sous chef there. And again, like I said before, I do the same duties, food ordering, inventory, making sure the place is clean, making sure the food comes out right, making sure the food tastes good, making sure the lines are set up on time, making sure the line servers are giving good customer service, things of that nature. And being a chef, um, you can work in a lot of different places. Like I said, I worked in a museum, I worked in a bakery cafe, I've worked in a um, hotel, I've worked in a retirement home. Chefs can also work in restaurants, hospitals, country clubs. I know a lot of private chefs that work um, have their own businesses and have clients that they cook for. So there are a lot of different things that chefs can do. Not only, a lot of people just think chefs work in restaurants and work late hours, but there are a lot of different things that chefs can do. Like if you don't wanna work weekends, you can work at an office building. That's Monday through Friday, office hours. So no late nights, no weekends. You can work in a, a school, like elementary school, like I'm talking to you guys, or like a middle school or high school. There's no um, summer, you don't have to work in the summer. And then you don't have to work weekends. So basically you're working school hours. So there's different types of um, chefs. So hope this was informative and I'm really excited to show you my cooking demo because usually I do career day but I can't do a cooking demo so I'm really excited to do a cooking demo for you here in my kitchen. I've been out of work since March so I've been doing a lot of cooking in my kitchen here so hope you enjoy my demo. Hey everybody Chef Tala here I'm back. Today I'm going to show you how to make an Italian dish called chicken piccata which is basically a chicken breast that is pounded out and seasoned with seasoned flour and then you make a lemon caper butter sauce that goes on top. And then you also serve it over a bed of pasta and I'm gonna serve it with some asparagus too. So hope you enjoy this demo. So before you start cooking, you need to get your mise en place together, which is a French term that means everything in its place. So basically it means get all your ingredients that you're gonna use in the recipe together so that when you're cooking and preparing the recipe, you don't have to keep going back and forth looking for things. So I'm gonna show you all my mise en place. Here I have my butter, my lemon, my capers, which look like little balls here. And it comes in a jar like this. You get it from the grocery store. And they're really salty. It's like a pickle, but really salty. And then I have my seasoned flour here, my pasta, which I'm using thin spaghetti. I got my chicken, and then I'm gonna have a side of asparagus here. And then I have my water going for my pasta. I already started boiling it. And the secret to this pasta is you for you, you have to add salt to the water to make sure the pasta has flavor. And then I also like to add a little bit of oil so that the pasta doesn't stick when you're cooking. So this is my chicken breast here. And I already bought them already thin, so I don't have to pound them out. But this is how thin you would like it, like this. And if you don't, have thin chicken breast, you can pound them out with the meat mallet, or you can use like a spoon and pound it out. But make sure when you're pounding it out, you put it um, on top of a piece of saran, uh, saran wrap, and then you put another piece of saran wrap on top, and then you pound it from there. You don't want to pound directly on the chicken because that can cause um, cross-contamination, which means like bacteria can get into the food from another object. So here's my chicken. I'm gonna um, start the process of uh, putting the flour on it. So I have it on this plate right here. And like I said earlier, I already have my um, seasoned flour, which is right here. And I'm going to put it on top of the chicken. And what I put into my flour was um, garlic powder, onion powder, um, salt, pepper, lemon pepper, and paprika. But you can put whatever you like into your flour mixture, whatever seasonings and herbs that you like. But that's usually what I season my meats with. So I'm just uh, on one side, I am putting the flour on. Then I'm gonna repeat on the other side. So I'm gonna get some more flour from my mixture, put it over here like that. And then I'm gonna put it on the other side like this. 
And then I have some more chicken because I'm making a meal, so for more than one person. But this is how you do the chicken breast. So next I'm going to put my um, spaghetti into the water over here, which is I already had put the um, salt and the olive oil in it. So I'm just going to take some like this. I don't like, some people like to break it up so it's easier to fit into the pot. But I find if you just stick it in all at once like this without breaking it up, it'll eventually um, soften and then it'll all fit into the pot. So, I'm going to just put a couple of handfuls in here. I'm making, like I said, for a bunch of people. So, I'm going to put as much as I think I need. And if I don't have enough, I can always make more. So, I'm going to get my tongue. I'm just going to push the spaghetti into the pot. I'm just going to push it down but not break it. Let it like soften up with the boiling water. And then I'm going to cover it. Let it boil until it's al dente. Al dente is um, when it's still a little bit Crunchy, but not all the way soft. So it's in between almost being all the way soft and being a little bit on the crunchier side. So next, I'm gonna cut my asparagus. Basically, all you wanna do is you wanna cut like the little ends off of it. So like about this much, like the white part. And you wanna keep the rest of the asparagus whole like this. And then I have a little trash bin here, so this little end is gonna go right here. And then once I cut all my asparagus, I'm going to show you how I cook it. So my pasta's right here cooking. And it basically, it looks like it's um, just about ready. I just ate a piece and it's almost ready. And so I'm going to strain it. So I have my colander here and my cold water's going. I'm going to pour the pasta in and run it under the cold water so the cooking process will stop. So, for my asparagus, it's basically just going to be the asparagus, olive oil, salt and pepper. So I already turned my stove on. I'm heating my pot up. I'm going to add some olive oil to my pan. And I'm just going to move it around like this so the whole pan is coated. I'm just going to let it sit here for a minute until it heats up, and then I'm gonna put the asparagus. So my pot is getting hot, so I'm gonna throw my asparagus in. Here, sizzling. I'm just gonna turn it down a little. And then salt, pepper. Like that. And most of my vegetables, I usually just season with salt and pepper. I don't put anything else on vegetables. Because salt and pepper goes a long way. When it comes to um, vegetables, I'm going to let it sit like this and cook up. Then I'm going to flip it in a minute. So as you see, it's looking good. It's like a bright green color. I'm just uh, continuously moving it. You see part of this so it's a little bit brown, which is good. It doesn't really take that long to cook asparagus, so you don't want to get it to the too long, because you still want that little bit of crunch to it. So this is pretty much done. I'm going to put it to the side and save it for my plating. And that's so it. We are going to do the chicken which I had in my flour and my seasoning. So first I'm gonna put the butter in. So since we're doing a lemon caper butter sauce, I'm going to put the chicken in butter. And I'm gonna do it all in this one pan, the butter sauce and the chicken. So it's all a one-stop shop. So 
I'm getting all the butter here. And then after, I'm gonna put my chicken in. And I'm gonna brown each side one by one. You want that nice um, golden brown color to it. So I'm just gonna let it sit for a minute. And then I'm gonna flip it over and show you what it looks like. So before I flip it, I'm going to add some lemon. Like this, some lemon juice. And then I'm going to flip it to the other side. As you see, it has a nice golden brown color, which I love. So that's how it should look when you flip it. And then you just squeeze a little bit more lemon in here. If you want, what the heck, you can just throw the lemon in here too. Since the lemon breast is so thin already, it doesn't take that long to cook. You don't even got to put it in the oven. So I'm just going to squeeze some more juice here. And everyone has a different way of making this recipe. This is the way I make it. Other people can do it different ways. So this is how I do it. So this chicken breast is just about done. So I'm going to take so it out. This is the sauce right here. I added some more butter. And then lemon, and then I added some um, flour too to thicken it up a little bit. And then I'm gonna throw a little bit of capers in there. So let me get my capers. I'm gonna throw a little teaspoon in here. And then I'm gonna show you how I plate my dish. So I'm gonna show you how I plate my chicken piccata. So I'm gonna get my garnish together. So I have my uh, little, we have a parsley here. And then I have my lemon here to come. And I'll show you how to, how I do my little lemon garnish. So I just cut it into like a little circle. Like this. And then I cut like a little slit down the middle, halfway. And then I like twist it like this. That's gonna be my garnish. So I have my plate here. So I'm going to start with my pasta noodles, my spaghetti. I'm just going to take a handful and twirl it on here and make it stand up nicely. I like to create, try to create some height when I'm making plates. I like to keep everything in the center of the plate. I don't like to have anything like on the edges of the plate that fingerprints can get into. And then I'm going to put my uh, asparagus next. So I'm putting five pieces of asparagus with each plate. I usually like to get the jumbo asparagus so it's not as flimsy, but this would do. And then I put my nicely cooked chicken on top with my, let me get my Lemon caper butter sauce right here. And then I'm gonna put my garnish on top. And you always want your garnish to be edible. So let me put this down right here. And I'm gonna put my garnish like this. The lemon right here. And then the parsley in the middle. And this is my chicken piccata. If you have any questions, you can find me on Facebook, Tala Harris Nadi Pasquale, or you can find me on Instagram at Chef Tala Star. Thank you for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed.